It says we're live. It says we're live. Where's Jamie? Where's <laughs> Jamie's behind the camera. And why is the camera wiggling? Oh my gosh. Uh, hi everybody. I'm Shannon. Ta da! Welcome to those of you viewing on YouTube. I'm Jamie. Hi. And welcome to those of you viewing on Facebook. This is our monthly live acoustic concert uh, brought to you by our Misfit Stars community of supporters. Thank you so much, Misfit Stars. We're going to talk more about what Misfit Stars is all about in a minute, but I thought we should just get right into a song. Oh man, let's do it. Okay. Oh, Here. we're going into the Wayback Machine immediately, people. This is so great. This is so fun. So, uh. all of these songs are chosen by our Misfit Stars, and we ask them um, if they have any like special story they want to sh share for each song. Um, and there were just two quick ones for this first one. Uh, the first one from David. He said that Wasted, an old favorite, first time I saw a concert. I were playing the song in New York City when I met David. That is so cool. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and what was the other one that I gave you? Uh, this one's from Beverly. Yeah. Beverly says, Wasted was my go-to breakup song to remind me to stay broken up. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> cool. So, kicking it off with a good old breakup song, reminding you why you need to stay broken up. Mm -hmm. Here is from the way, way, way back machine, Wasted. Imagine how rich I'd be 
play back machine with you guys immediately. I know. It was like, you know, our, our Misfit started to on these songs, and this one has been climbing the ranks the last few months. It finally got through. This is actually the number one voted song. No okay. kidding. This month, yes. Oh. Oh, that's great. Oh, yes. we do them in photo to work ish, don't we? Well, no, no, no. I mean, we don't. No, I just put it first oh, because that's great. it spiritually felt like the right first song. I love it. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hello. Hi. We are here doing this thing in our studio uh, like we do once a month, um, our live acoustic concert. And this concert, we, we say it again and again every month we're here. It's brought to you by our Misfit Stars community. Stars. Jimmy, what is Misfit Stars? So glad you asked, Shannon. First of all, it's this beautiful coffee mug. Can you even see with the glare? It's hard. There you go. Misfit Stars. Oh, so beautiful. See the starburst? That's like our icon. It's great. Um, no, but in all seriousness, it's not just a mug. So Misfit Stars is kind of the umbrella for everything that Shannon and I do together. So Shannon's a singer-songwriter. That's her. She's at ShannonCurtis.net. I'm a record producer and mixer. Uh, I am at departmentofenergymanagement.com. We realized a couple of years ago, though, that most people just kind of think of us as one hydra-like two-headed creature. Like, it's shamey, you know? But like, we literally not... have somebody who calls us that. Shamey has, like, has the word shame in it, and I don't like it. It's no good. It's also, so shamey.net, really weird URL. So what we did instead yeah. is we just <laughs> thought of a thing to sort of be an umbrella over the world. That the and that's Misfit Stars. And we've centered a whole bunch of our community around it. We have a podcast. You can hear that at MisfitStars.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we have sort of an intentional community under the Misfit Stars umbrella. And Shannon, talk about that for okay, a Okay, yeah. So Misfit Stars, uh, the, the, the community is people who support the work that Jamie and I do on, a on an ongoing basis, on a monthly subscription basis. And they are, they're literally supporting everything we do. So from the podcast to these monthly concerts, to the new music we're making, like the 2020-101 project that we've been rolling out the last couple of uh, weeks, um, uh, to the mentoring work that we do, literally everything that they do, that we do, they're supporting it um, and making it possible by their monthly support. But also the community part is really cool because we uh, just have this group of people that have decided we want to support what Shannon and Jamie are doing. Turns out they have other things in common too. Turns out they, are in common, have things uh, like wanting to, to, to learn and grow and be better humans and have places to, to share with each other what's going on in their lives and to, to seek support and encouragement and to laugh at, with each other and, and really make a community. And it's so, for people who are looking for more in their life. Yeah, you know, so it was a surprise to us, honestly, that our Misfit Stars community sort of bonded in the way that they have been. Um, but honestly, it's been one of the best, best things that's happened in our lives, <laughs> in our work lives, yeah. uh, in our personal lives. We've always done time. our work in a community-centered kind of way. Yeah. This just made that really explicit over this last year and bonded us a lot tighter with our people. Mwah. Love you. Yes. Let's do another song. We'll talk more about that in a well, bit. Well, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, so the next song yeah. is uh, is uh, Zero. So this is from the album uh, Revolutionary Acts of Optimism. <laughs> and... Um, this was this was sort of like this song honestly was what felt to me like sort of like the the heartbeat of that album. Yeah. Like, this this song is is summarizes my theory of how I would like for us to organize our society, <laughs> where we stop thinking about things in scarcity terms and start thinking of things in abundance. Yeah. Um, so let's do it. Humanity's not a zero sum game. No, no. it's not. <laughs> oh, that's right. We start together. Yeah. You gonna count us off? Thank you. 
It's not zero sum, it's all multiplication. We are standing in a windfall. We've already got it all, already got it all. Before we do it, every single month, I always say that the whole premise for the show is that we have about two hours to learn how to play <laughs> eight to ten songs that we haven't played sometimes in over a decade, it's either of us, yeah. and then we swashbuckle our mm -hmm. way through them <laughs> with extreme enthusiasm, that part is guaranteed, and <laughs> occasional competence. The occasional competence is what you're witnessing mostly here tonight. With the tambourine. <laughs> and the piano. <laughs> the singing's good. The singing's always good. Jan's okay. lucky in that regard. That's nice of you You just say. open your mouth and it comes out. Yes. You don't have to make the fingers do stuff. Yeah. Okay, hey, so people, by the way, what? mash those hearts if you love Shannon singing. <laughs> Mwah! Oh, my gosh. How much do we love Shannon and her beautiful songs? Hearts, hearts, Thanks, hearts. Thanks, honey. Thanks, people. <laughs> so, <laughs> the next song that we have for you tonight, I, this is, like, one of my personal, like, favorites maybe of all time like it's just yeah. like it is it, this is a very personal song to me actually um we're gonna take it down for you folks <laughs> this is a song uh from our 2016 album that was called creationism which was all about um we're gonna be talking for a moment so you oh i'll be playing for oh that. okay yeah. well great <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going full on like lounge hour here um in 20 in 2016, we put out this album called Creationism, which uh, was all about the idea that we are creating the world that we live in. So let's make something beautiful together. And each of the songs in the album had something to do with that idea. Um, this one, however, was very personal in that, like, um, as I was writing this album, like, in my little studio, and then I was going to bring it out to Jamie's studio, we're going to work on music together. And at the time, we were living in this. In our little duplex in South Pasadena, California. 860 square feet of heaven. Yeah. And um, I just, you know, it struck me that, like, in our, this little life that we built with each other is something that we created little by little, moment by moment. And I just wanted to write a song about that idea that, you know, that a life, a life that you're living, you know, on your own or with a partner is something that is, it doesn't just happen, <laughs> you know? Like, every bit of, of effort that you put into it gets stacked up on top of the last bit of effort that you put into it. And even though when I looked around our little world, like our little house and, you know, this little corner of, of paradise that we lived in, it was enough for me, and I loved it, and I wanted to write a song sort of to honor that. But remember that little place? Remember when we first moved in? Like, it seemed huge. It seemed huge to us. There yeah. was an, an extra bedroom that we didn't even have to sleep in. <laughs> but it was the a, bounty, a guest oh my bedroom. gosh. Yeah. It was also a closet and also a recording studio for Shannon. It was, yeah. But yeah. you know, um, I remember when we first signed the lease on that place. That was our first place that we lived, that we signed the lease on together. Like, that was a big deal. Like, it was a, it was a, a move towards something that was be something in my life. And we it, got married a year later. It sure was. <laughs> That's right. We did get married a year later. So we did it everything the very first time, like a <laughs> few years of our relationship, a year at a time. So I helped Shannon move down from Sacramento to Los Angeles at the end 
of August in 2007, 2006. It's hard to talk and play at the same time. <sighs> Man, the hardest. Especially when you're doing like a super cheese lounge. But we did like, yes. And then 2007, I moved in with Shannon. 2008, we got this place together. And 2009, we got married. It was all in like August or September, yeah. every time. So anyway, this is a song sort of just honoring the little bits that we put on top of other little bits and created something that I really love with you. I love you too. I love you. Can so, you believe I just lounged all the way through that? I'm impressed. I am so sorry. <laughs> I really shouldn't have done that. This is a song called... Just had some coffee. This uh, is a song called Little Life. <laughs>
so good. Mash some hearts if you love that beautiful <laughs> Do you love old the love song. Songs? Mash the thumbs down button if you thought that song sucked. Oh no. If any of you do that, you're in so much trouble. <laughs> I say that to give you two opportunities to do something nice. <laughs> That's amazing. That's one of those things, like, you know how, like, any of you with partners, like, you might have a situation like where your partner will be like, no, it's fine, go ahead and do that. But what they really mean is, don't you, you are even dare. under no circumstance allowed to do that. I'm testing you. I'm giving you a chance to make a good decision to reaffirm my faith in you as a human being. That's kind of what that thumbs down thing is for. If any of you do that, you're in big trouble. You know, I wanted to say, um, I meant to mention this earlier when we were talking about Misfit Stars. Um, so you know that all the songs tonight are being voted on by Misfit Stars. We've talked about the Misfit Stars. We love you, Misfit Stars. Mm -hmm. There's something that we have not talked about publicly outside of our Misfit Stars community that I forgot to mention earlier, but which is like a very big deal. Like, a very big deal. This is almost like a... <laughs> A world exclusive announcement happening right now. It is. Stealthily on a live you're broadcast. If not part of the Misfit Stars yet, mm -hmm. then this is the first that you're hearing about this. Um, Jamie and I, for the last mm, two years or so, we've had a private Facebook group just for our Misfit Stars. And it came to come to, it, just, it just sort of occurred to us over time that Facebook was not the right spiritual home for that. Online. Facebook's interests and our interests Here are, we are. very divergent. We're broadcasting on Facebook. But what do you want also, to bet the Facebook stream just shuts down? <laughs> yeah. in, in case the Facebook stream shuts down, we're on YouTube Live also, so just <laughs> head on over there. But, you know, it just occurred to us that that was just not the right uh, online home. And so we scratched our heads and tried to figure out what we could do. We wanted to continue to foster this community and to get people an opportunity to get to know each other and support each other. And so um, what we did is... We did something really kind of wild. And I just want to prep you. Like, if you're standing up watching this Sit right down. now. Seriously, like, if you're in the kitchen walking around, maybe just have a seat. <laughs> Here's what we did. Uh, about two weeks ago, Jamie and I launched our own social network. Pause. It's called Think. the Misfit Stars Social Network. Yeah. It is not on Facebook. No. It is not on any of the other social media giants that you no. know of it's it is our own ours. private space remember when we first all joined facebook and it was a social network then and it was just for like staying in touch with people and you know and it morphed over time to like suck all of your private data and then spit it back out in form of ads that they wanted to sell you and, and it became figure social. out ways to outrage you because they learned over time that outrage is what keeps you on the platform longer so literally when you're going to facebook you're going to a place that is designed to try to make you angry we that's don't want, not good for we us we don't want you to be angry no so it's like the opposite of everything we're trying to do in the world it's now if you notice that it's now facebook is now called social media yeah. it's not and it's not a social network anymore but what we really, what we really wanted for our Misfit Stars community is a social network, yeah. a home online um, where we can do the gathering virtually that we want to do, where we can have the conversations, where we can get deep. And so we launched our own social network, and it is an amazing space. Like when I go there, amazing space. That wasn't even in the set list, you guys. No. Um, that was <laughs> improvisation. Thank you. So. Here's the thing. I have found myself in the last two weeks, tell me if this is true for you, I've found myself spending a lot less time on Facebook because I'm going instinctively to the Misfit Star social network first instead because that space, to me, feels calming yeah. and it feels private. And nurturing. And nurturing. And people are having like deep conversations. That's and not also, the only thing that's happening. Yeah. But like people feel safe, I think, in a way that <laughs> they have maybe never felt on Facebook the entire time we've known them. Yes. To just be who they really are, confident in the knowledge that they are in a safe, private, honestly private space. Not quote unquote private like a Facebook group where, sure, we won't tell, but Facebook's algorithm is scraping every single thing you say to then sell back to you as ads somewhere else on the internet, which is so cynical. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So we are thrilled about this new space. Our misfit stars seem to be thrilled about the new space so far. Um, and if you are, if you've been thinking about joining the misfit stars community, 
Now would be a great time to do that. And you can do that by going to misfitstars.com slash join. You can also, if you want to see the new space or the front door to it, just go to community.misfitstars.com. That's where our social network lives. Yeah. Community.misfitstars.com. And if you go there, you can just request an invite. If you are already a paid and full member of Misfit Stars, great. We'll just acknowledge the invite and you're in. And if you are brand new, we'll just redirect you to the subscription page and you'll be in, in a GIF. Yeah. So anyways, I didn't want to go any further without mentioning that because it's it's been like one of the biggest developments in our lives yeah. for the last couple of weeks and I wanted you to know about it. Uh, we'll probably start talking about it more publicly online elsewhere in the coming weeks and months, but uh, just wanted, wanted to mention it here. Just tonight. start our own social network, no big. No big. The huge. No big yeah. deal. What did you do last week? Oh, we started a social network. Did you? <laughs> no? Oh, well, you know. That's, I'm sure whatever you do is great. Oh though. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like the worst this cocktail party awful. guest ever. You are awful. Insufferable. Yeah, yeah you totally. Are. Totally. That's a dude who, like, if he's at the cocktail party, like, everyone just walks away. <laughs> and he's kind of by himself with his voice. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's really good that the next song we have to do for you is super earnest because it'll cleanse all of that. That's just yeah. happened. <laughs> also, people, we didn't just do it in, like, two weeks. Like, we have spent months setting this thing up. Yeah. Just so you know. Uh, but we launched it, and we're so excited about it, and we yeah. want you to be a part of it. Here's the deal. If you're an asshole... Like, I bet that maybe one or two people watching this right now, not you, Shan, don't raise your oh, hand, okay. you're not an asshole. Okay. No, no, not you. Try but maybe you. someone, well, don't we all, really. Uh, but, you know, if you're an asshole and you're watching this, please do not go to community.misfitstars.com and request an invite, because frankly, we don't want you in there. Because that's the whole point. We only want kind, nice, decent human beings who want something in their lives, want to be part of an actual community of people. That's the only thing we want. So if you're just like a dick, move on. Seriously, move on. No you can watch the concert. It's fine. And maybe reflect on why you are the way you are and try to be better. Oh my God. <laughs> you are too much. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, like I said, here's an earnest cleansing for you from all of right. that like sarcasm. Right. Hey, do we have stories? We have. So, so I have a couple things to say about this next song. Um, I'm so glad that this one made it into the set this week, or this month. Uh, because, so this is a song that's from the very, the, the debut, my, our debut full length record. Cinemascope. Cinemascope. From 2013. A long time ago. Um, it's a song called When the Lights Go Down. And, um, I was stoked that, I mean, I, I, I love this, I love this song, so I'm glad for the opportunity to play it. But secondly, uh, this gives me a great opportunity to announce for the first time to our community here that this song is going to be in a movie that's going to be uh, debuting on video on demand uh, next month, like just in, the, it, in a few weeks. Isn't it also getting a small theatrical run? Oh, that's right. It's an uh, actual actually, feature no, film, yes. people. It actually did get a small theatrical run. Yeah. We couldn't go to it because all the theaters were closed in our state. Yeah. And wasn't it playing at like one place up in Seattle? But we're like, of course we're not going because pandemic. Well, it it was playing at a theater in Seattle, but I don't think that the theater was actually open at that oh, time. Because we were in tier one. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. It was this is the, this is the first time. We've had songs in movies before that have gone like straight to you know video. This was literally the first time that a song that we've done was going to be in a theater movie, and we could not go to the theater to see it. No, but really rude. It is going to be on video on demand, um, like on Amazon, I believe, and probably Apple TV. I'm not sure exactly which outlets it's going to be in, so I, sh I sh shouldn't say anything more about that. But we will let you know when, when and where it's available. And this song is sort of like, I've heard, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard that this song is in a scene that's sort of like a pivotal pivotal scene in the movie, which is pretty exciting. The movie is called The Never List, and it sounds like a really cool movie. It's, yeah. a, a, it's, a, it's about a, a young girl, a teenage girl, who has a best friend who dies. And that's, I'm not giving anything away, uh, but she dies toward the beginning of the movie. They had, before she died, they had made a list of things they, they would never do. Oh, I would never do that. I would never do that. And once her friend dies, she goes about doing all the things on the Never list. And um, so I'm so excited to see the movie. It's like, it, it looks from the trailer that we saw, like it's this amazing combination of like coming of age and finding yourself and female empowerment. And it's just, it's all the good things. Well, and uh, the movie itself was made by a female director, a female writer. It was scored by a female composer. Like it was, it's like a woman movie, <laughs> which is also really awesome. We didn't tell them that this song was produced by a guy. <laughs> Jamie's kind of a unisex name. I'm sure they were like, hey, produced by Jamie Hill. Written, that's great. Written Shan and performed by me, and that's good yeah. enough. <laughs> Shannon's a lesbian, and her wife, Jamie, produced this. 
It's really what they were thinking. That's maybe that's what they were thinking. Girl but power. I don't think there's actually there's actually dudes with songs in this movie too. So guy power. <laughs> anyway, um, you can't start playing it because there's also a story for this song. One of our misfit oh, stars great. submitted a story that Jamie's gonna read to you, and then uh, we'll play when the lights go down. Great, great. Uh, who's this from? Heather. Oh, it's from Heather H. We love Heather. I love this. Heather says, I have always been afraid of the dark. My parents would leave a light on in the bathroom down the hall. I spent most of my days running from the real nightmares of trauma by hiding behind fake smiles and keeping secrets. By nighttime, my mind had nothing left to fight what might be hiding in the shadows. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I want to know where I am and that I'm safe. I am grown now and still have some light on in my room. Sometimes I feel silly that the dark has some kind of power to cause such fear. Mm. Mm. We love you, Heather. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And yeah. here is when the lights go down. Felt. Thank you. Well, you know, I was I, I when I wrote that song, I was it was all about you know sort of like identifying the places in my childhood where I felt like I needed healing, yeah. you know, as an adult, and that's been so much of my the last what like 15, 16 years of my life has been figuring out how to acknowledge those places where I needed healing and figure out how to heal them. And the realization that that healing most often for me has come in the context of relationships with people, you know, and with connection with others. And like, you know, we, we were just talking about the Misfit Stars community before that song. Like, that's what I really want that group to be. And that's really what the group is making it into is a place where we can find healing with the, within ourselves 
the context of a community that is supportive and loving and you know and as we're all learning how to how to heal learning how to be better and learning how to do better to do that in a, in, in community with others is like it's gold it's gold <laughs> i wish i had known about this kind of thing my whole life <laughs> you know yeah. though you and i did get lucky we got more of a jump start on it than some people do you know we were just talking about this with one another uh yesterday shannon and i were um, we're at an age, she and I, where we have, uh, we're starting to have some friends who are experiencing what you might call midlife crises. Yeah, you know? totally. And both of us were kind of like, man, how fortunate that it doesn't really feel to either of us as though that's going to happen in our world. I mean, you know, knock on wood. Uh, but, you know, I think really it's because we each had our crises a lot earlier in our lives, you know? And we were kind of forced by the circumstances of our lives to really do some hard reckoning mm. that I think a lot of people don't get forced to do, but everybody's got that stuff, right? right. Everybody's got mm. that trauma, that unhealed stuff from their childhood maybe, from early relationships, mm. maybe from early adulthood kind of stuff that just didn't go quite right and just maybe you carry shame about that. Mm. Maybe you carry feelings of you know, a lack of worthiness or something mm. like that in your life, you know? you're gonna reckon with it at some point, right? And so the question is, when do you reckon with it? Uh, and I think a lot of people don't get forced by circumstance to, hence midlife crises, right? Because it comes out eventually, doesn't it, you know? Totally, but, and like, the, what a gift to be able to do that though. Like that's not, yes, each of us has to walk our own journey, like of healing on our own, like it's up to each of us. But the discovery that we can do that in context yeah, of yeah. community, is amazing. <laughs> um, and that's been honestly, for me, one of the coolest things, uh, first about the Facebook group and now about the Misfit Star social network, yeah. is because Shannon and I have really intentional mm -hmm. life experience around healing, you know, me with sobriety, you know, and Shannon with her recovery also, mm -hmm. it's something that we can pass on to other people, you know? We can uh, share with others who are doing it too. Yeah, you know? and it's not the overall tone of anything we do, as you know, but it undergirds all of it. I mean, really, in my life, that's my foundation, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, absolutely. Just, and it's just, you know, that I have a practice of self-reflection, you know, yeah. of identifying when I screwed up and quickly making it right, yeah. you know? Just like, kind of basic <clears throat> human life skills. I view them now as basic human life skills, but man, when I was like 30, they were the furthest thing from basic skills. Like, if you'd mentioned, explained, any of those things I just talked about to me at when I was 30 years old, I would have been like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you're, you're speaking English, but I don't fundamentally understand the words that are yeah. coming out of your mouth. I mean, really, I just had no framework for how to be an emotionally healthy person. And it's the coolest thing to get to surround ourselves with other people who are on the path to like being better versions of themselves. Yeah, totally. Love that. Totally. Um, so this, I'm, I'm segueing into our next song. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie mentioned that I went through a, like my own personal, like, crisis when I was like age 30 <laughs> and this song was you know incidentally written not long after that. <laughs> what did Eddie Kramer say about 30? <laughs> oh yeah my my old my the, the band I was in for, for in my 20s Paradigm we, did, uh, a, we recorded one song with Eddie Kramer who is the engineer for um uh for uh Jimi Hendrix um among many many of the <laughs> 60s luminaries very yeah, famous guy very but Eddie Kramer told me when I was about to turn 30 and I was, we were having dinner during this uh, studio session we did with him, he said to me in his British accent, which I'm going to totally butcher right now, he's like, ah, oh, 30 is a dangerous age. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it totally is. Um, it was for me. But, the, but out of that turmoil came, really it was the first time in my life that I'd ever sort of like processed like heartbreak and relationships and like, the nuance of all that stuff. Yeah. And I, I was listening to a lot of Fiona Apple at the time. And so this is my... Say no more, really. This is my Fiona Apple song from, like... I think I wrote this in... I wrote, I wrote this, this song... not a Fiona Apple song? Oh, but no, it totally is. It, I, what? I'll explain it to you later. But of course it is. It is? Um, of course it is. It's like a torch song. She has some torch... She, is Fiona Apple not, like, totally torchy sometimes? Come on. All the, all the time. Anyway. I listen to Fetch the bolt cutters and I don't quite get that. All right, whatever. <laughs> I was listening to the Fiona Apple Torchy songs. Yeah, yeah, A lot yeah, of fair, it. Fair. Um, anyway, uh, this one came out of that era and it is very like melodramatic, hard on one sleeve. Uh, it's called Leave You Behind. <laughs> so dramatic. Oh my gosh, already. Can't you imagine Fiona Apple playing that? 
You can. To me, it's more like Billie Holiday. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Synthesizer album right now <laughs> with absolutely no lounginess and there's no major sevens and things. There's just synthesizers. <laughs> and it's amazing. But this is a really nice like palate cleanser. It is very fun. Hey, I'm seeing a lot of hearts. Thanks, people. Thank you, hearts. We see them, they do mean a lot. We're far enough away now from the phone that we can't see everything everyone is saying. We will come back and say on hi. YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. We'll come back and say hi later. But thank you so much for the hearts on Facebook. We yeah. see them, they make a huge difference. Yes, yeah. thank Love you, you guys. so much. What? Next I was month? just going to uh, you, you th 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 No, you know what? I'll say it later. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, we're going to segue into Aren't you intrigued, though? I'm so. You shouldn't be. It was really an abortive I kind of brain fart. I can't wait to yeah. hear what you have to say. Thanks. Um, you know, someone that asked me, uh, so I, I mentioned this earlier, I'll mention it again. All these songs are being, are, are, have been chosen tonight by our Misfit Stars community. 
stars, you did a great job. Yeah. Um, and every month we take off the ballot songs that we've already done on previous monthly acoustic concerts. It's a winnowing process. So we're getting into these deep cuts and it's so much fun. But I did have a question from one of our stars earlier uh, this week when we put the ballot out and he asked me, would in future ballots, would we be including songs from our brand new 2020 project? Yeah. Well, I, I have to or tell no. you, I don't know. I oh. don't know. That's Let's, what I'm here to tell okay. you. Is I Talk me through it. I don't know. So first of all, 2020 if you're not yet familiar with this new project that we're doing, uh, let's just do a quick commercial break for that. So we're, we're in the middle right now of making a new album. It's called 2020 um, You might recall that a couple of months ago I started harvesting stories from y'all. I kept asking questions about your experiences in 2020. And I took all of that uh, information. Um, I sort of like figured out what the common themes were from she the- She Brene brown it. <laughs> I was doing qualitative research. <laughs> Um, but I, I figured out what the common themes, there were over, well over a hundred uh, different people contributing their stories from 2020. And so I drew out from, from all those stories, 11 themes that popped up with some frequency uh, among all those stories and sort of became the, the 11 most common themes of people's experience in 2020. And we're making a song for each of those 11 themes uh, and we're doing them, uh, I'm writing them, we're recording them and we're releasing them every 10 days for 101 days. One new song every 10 days for 101 days. So we are two songs in. Song two came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's called Through the Window and it's a song about loss and grief in the year 2020. Um, and the way that those things were disrupted for a lot of people, you know, like the rituals that we all have around dying and around grieving and around death and all of that, like, as you well know, like we could things like normal last year and that got affected for a lot of people. Right. Shannon wrote this amazing mm -hmm. song about it. And it's amazing to me because it's mm -hmm. not dour. Like you would think that with subject matter like this, like it might be like really sad or really depressing. Shannon somehow managed to make a song that perfectly honors the gravity and the seriousness of that stuff while also having it be celebratory and joyous. And I have absolutely no idea how you do that. But she did it. It's really well, remarkable. you know, to me it seemed like, you know, for, for people who... I know the, the, the last person in my life that was close to me that I lost was my grandmother a few years ago. And I remember, you know, and she was she was old. She was in her, she was, you know, 94. in her 90s, you know. And um, and she was ready to be done with her life. But I, and so I, but I remember in the time leading up to her passing, you know, we knew that it could come at any time. And so I remember every time we visited, all I wanted was for her to be happy. I wanted to, I wanted my, our visit make her smile. You know, I wanted, I wanted her to feel good. And I know, so for a lot of folks, I imagine when they have loved ones who are passing or who are sick, you know, that, that what they want for them is to feel the joy of life while they still can, you know, like, that was sort of like my goal with the song was to kind of evoke that feeling that, you know, when we lose somebody, yes, it's incredibly sad and it is really hard to process that kind of grief and that empty space in one's life. But I wanted to honor the feeling that people, that the, the, the survivors have and then had in the process of losing that loved one, of wanting to just lift them up. You know, so I was hoping that that's the feeling that you would get from that song. I love it. Anyway, so that's Through the Window. We released the first song uh, 10 days prior to yesterday. It was called Precipice. We will we'll be releasing the next one in nine days nine from days. now. See the pattern? I haven't yet started writing it. <coughs> uh, bless sorry. You. Excuse me. <laughs> so sorry. Um, but 2020 101 is this new, new album project. Um, and so you can go uh, to 2020101.net and you can see both of the songs that have been released so far. You can also read stories that people have contributed now after the songs yeah. are released. So this is like a whole other part of this project, people. So here's the deal. We set up this new like website just for the album project. It's at 2020101.net, like Shannon said. And so each song gets its own page. There are currently two pages. There will eventually be 11 pages, plus sort of a landing page. So, you know one more than that. Mm -hmm. And each page basically has like what Shannon wrote about the song, which is always so good to read because she has a really good way of sort of just placing it in context and making it make more sense 
Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, the lyrics, if that's helpful to you. And then the coolest part of it is that, so with the release of each song, we're reaching back out into our community and that's saying, you. okay, so now here is this song. It's on this theme. Do any of you have something you would like to share, a story, a remembrance of 2020 on this theme? And we're recollecting stories from people and we're archiving them on this website. So when you go to 2020101.net, you'll see there's a ton of stories for Precipice. And it's, it feels really healing to me to read these stories. Like it, it kind is. of is a way to like frame and contextualize my own experience. Yeah. It makes it feel not so weird. It makes me feel like, and understand that I was sharing this time with people. Yeah. Even though like we were just the two of us in our house all the time and not really seeing anybody, a lot of people were having similar experiences to us. And it feels really just good to just sit with that stuff for a while. Yeah, for sure. And also, if you have stories you want to share, we want to hear them. So you can email them to Jamie. Yeah. Uh, so far, the themes that we have that we're collecting stories on are uh, for Precipice, which is how was your normal disrupted in 2020? And how did you reevaluate what normal looks like for you? Um, that was theme one. Theme two is about loss and grief in 2020. Um, maybe you lost someone in 2020 and you just want to share about them. Mm -hmm. We would love to archive that on the website. So you email Jamie. We would 100% archive your memorial if you want to make that. That's a yeah. great idea. Yeah. And also if you have a story, you know, about how, you know, your maybe you lost somebody, but the way in which you lost them was totally unusual because of 2020. You know or you just I mean? want to share your experience, whatever your experience was, yeah. it's valuable and valid. Yeah. And so you can email it to Jamie at jamie at misfitstars.com. Yeah. And that's where you uh, can share your story. And there's, there's a little thing about that at the bottom <coughs> of the song page too, so don't feel like you have to memorize it. So my whole, I brought this up because our, one of our Misfit Stars asked, hey, will the new... 2020 101 songs be available on future ballots for this monthly acoustic concert mm. and I feel conflicted about it How well so? because and I told him this in a message like I'm sure I thought about it before making the ballot for this week's concert but like there's part of me that wants the songs to all be written and then come out and then for the for the first time that they are performed live to be performed as a family oh, I 100% agree with that and so there's that. Yeah. Also, I know we're of, it's of the moment and we're in it right now. And so there's <clears> part of me that's like, oh, would it be fun to play through the window for you right now? Yeah, it, it would. So I'm conflicted and I haven't decided. And so indecision is mm. making me immobile. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's fair. But what you said really resonated with me. Okay. Like the idea that like we want to keep this as a really intentional body of work yeah. through the album cycle. Right. Maybe at the end of the album cycle, we'll release these back into the uh, acoustic pool. Maybe so. Because we'll need new stuff by then okay. anyway. Well, just like that, in real time, we've made a decision. What do you think, people? <laughs> Mash some hearts if you're okay with that decision. But the good news is we've got still so many wonderful treasure troves of songs that people are voting on for these shows. This next one, um, I, this, I, I say this about a lot of songs, but really this is one of my favorites. Like It's one of my, <laughs> it's one of my pet favorite songs. Me too. And the recording is one of my all-time favorites that we made. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not going to say anything about it except for, Jamie, you got a story to read mm -hmm. um, from one of our stars, Amanda. Uh, love you, who, Amanda. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yes? I was going to say, say, Amanda, she refers to this in her story. Amanda is a playwright, and she wrote a play. In fact, the, the way I got to know Amanda the most was in the run-up to the creation of her play, which is called I Am Her. Um, she used a bunch of, of our music as interstitial bits in her in the performance of her play, um, which is so special, and it was such a wonderful thing to get to know her through that even, process. Didn't she pull some of your lyrics and have like some of the actors speak them? Wasn't there a component there, of that? There was yes, there was some. So component. cool! I wish oh we could gosh. have seen the play live. Yeah, me too. Maybe one day we will get to. But um, anyway, what does she have to say? Uh, Amanda says this: "Slowly Break" was a central song to my play "I Am Her," and in fact. It ended up being the musical interlude between a few scenes. Mm -hmm. I don't know the story behind Shannon's lyrics, but for me, the words resounded with my 15-year-old self who was sexually assaulted by a group of high school boys at a party. Once again, Shannon's words helped me heal a broken part of myself. Mm -hmm. Man, thank you for sharing that, Amanda. Amanda has done some courageous work sharing her own story. Um, and you inspired me. Sister yeah. Amanda. Same. Uh, so here's Slowly Break. <clears throat>
And sometimes you just do what you know. Keep casting your if you appreciate <laughs> Shannon's tender heart. Oh man, you know, that, that's, yes. I, I want you to know that every song I write is about stuff that I'm processing in my own life and like... Thank God she processes so much, right? <laughs> but you know, like it is a, it is a, it is a regular thing that I have to re-remember that I already have everything that I need. Like it is not... A lesson that I've learned and now I'm just good. <laughs> I want you to know that like my heart breaks all the time still and I I still struggle with those moments where I don't feel like I'm enough or that I I feel like I've chased after things that haven't been satisfying to me and it's a constant process of coming back around to that moment where everything is new again and I have reali realized again that I have everything I need. And that I am enough. Start again. Over and over and over. And then you die. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Jamie for the humor. <laughs> okay, so this next song, this is this is um this is a distinctive performance, this next one that you're about to hear, because <sighs> listen to this. This is the first time that this song that you're about to hear has ever been performed live. It's a world premiere. Ever. This was on uh, a record that we put out. Uh, what record was this on? Was it on Metaforma? No, because it was. Was it Creationism? It was. Maybe it's. I, I can't even remember now what record it was on. We it did was, it a long time ago. <laughs> but here's we the were thing. drunk. No. On the tour that we did that year, this song was not in the set list. Like right. so, usually, usually. When we go out on tour after putting a record out, I play most, sometimes all, of the songs on the new record. Recently all. Recently it's been all the songs. But this year, I didn't play a couple of the songs from the record during our live show. Mm -hmm. And so this song was not a song that we brought on tour. And therefore, it has never been played live before right now. <laughs> Which is pretty fun. Um, this is a song called Last Night Ever. Um, this song, y'all, was totally written for David Bowie. <laughs> like, that is the, that, he's the inspiration for this song. Um, 
I I came to the David Bowie fan later in my life. Like I, I I missed out when I was a kid. I was listening to too much Amy Grant, and I missed out on David Bowie. <laughs> And I so, honestly, David Bowie probably would have been like, that's okay. Yeah. He would have been. Yeah. I know. But, but he would have been really chill about that. Jamie introduced me to David Bowie, and we got really deep into, you know, into Lodger and into Heroes and into, like, like all, just, we bought records on vinyl. We had CDs we listened to at nighttime before bed. And I got really into David Bowie. And I just, and I learned more about him. and just it, the, his approach to his life and his work, and I was just feeling super inspired. And then he put out the Black Star album, and then he died. Like, boom, boom. Remember when that happened? Like days what, apart. What, what year, was it 20, was that 20 2017. 2017. Okay, so The this, year everything went to shit, do you remember? <sighs> was it that year? No, because... Or was it 2016 and you checked out early? Yeah, was it? it was 2016, I think might it have was. Been, might yeah, have been, might have been, yeah. I think it was 20, it must yeah. have been 2016. Anyway. Um, but he I put just, out this record and like this long form video and like and had written this play. Yes. And like and then just like died. He did and, a photo shoot like well, three days before he died. He, yeah, here's the thing. They, they they he he put the record out and then he died. And, but he had yeah he did the he had stuff he was doing right up to the last minute. But it's not like he just died suddenly. He had cancer. Yeah. That nobody knew about. And he just like. And but he planned all this stuff to, like, to for his album cycle to continue after he died. Right. And for all this stuff that he was working on to have like a scheduled plan for life after his. Which was amazing to me, and I thought about that. I'm like, okay, you know, yes, this stuff, this was an orchestrated, planned out sort of thing. But also, it seems to me that that's just kind of like the way he lived his life was like he lived his life fully every day. So even if he hadn't planned all that stuff out, he still would have left a legacy of like pushing hard until the very end. And that's what this song really is about and was inspired by him. It's called Last Night Ever, and you are hearing it live for the first time ever. Ladies and gentlemen, the world premiere of a song from like 2014. <laughs>
write that song. Jamie I had to learn a hell of a little piano part this afternoon for that song. Good job. Thank you. There's just a lot of chords. <laughs> I know. You know, it might be an obscure sort of B-side kind of a song, but at least it's pretty complicated. <laughs> so, you know, got that going for me. But don't worry. It's not for nothing because I will never play it again. Oh, so until Misfit Stars vote on it again. That's true. Then, Although it's out of the pool, and there's like 130 songs in the pool or something. The, it's out of the pool for now. Yeah. But like the pool cycles about once a year. Although that cycle expands as Shannon keeps writing, we'll eventually it'll be infinite. An infinite pool of Whoa. songs. Whoa. Um, we have come to the last song of our show tonight, which is Aww. kind of a, it's a little bit of an abbreviated set. Um, and here's the reason for it: like we do because of math. Because math, we we do a ballot each month with our misfit stars. They vote on the songs. They share and stories. They share stories. And like there was this natural break in terms of like the first eight songs got you know votes. And then the next, like, most popular songs, there were, like, nine of them. So <laughs> All with the same number of votes. Yeah. So, like, what do you do? So, this was sort of the natural point of the ones that rose to the top this month, and so we decided that we would just honor that and play these eight songs. But the good news is there's more to come next month. We will Woo-hoo. be announcing our next monthly acoustic uh, concert um, Couple weeks. in a few weeks, yeah. and we'll be back here on, uh, on YouTube and on Facebook Live. Um, we hope that you can join us then. And people, here's the deal. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I want to reiterate this. Uh, Shannon and I have started our own social network. What? What? You are correctly sort of a competitor of Facebook. <laughs> We're not going to get venture capital and become billionaires. It's not like that. The point of it is, it's our own space just for us and our people. Because frankly, we don't feel as though Facebook's interests and our deeper community building interests are always perfectly aligned. Uh, and so we've just made our own space. It's at community.misfitstars.com. It's not social media. There's no monetization. Mm-hmm. Your data is not being harvested and sold to people without your best interests in mind. It's a social network. <clears throat> so it's just a place where we can be a community together online. Yeah. Because, you know, we don't live by a whole lot of the people mm-hmm. we know because of the music we do. I can guarantee you that of the people who are watching this video right now, people who are hearing the sound of my voice in real time, probably zero of them live where we live. Some of them live as far away as Australia and Canada and Europe. We have somebody for sure watching right now from Liverpool. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like 3.30 sure. in the morning. God bless you, Gary. Love you so much. And all over the, all yeah. the United States as well. It's so important mm-hmm. for us because of this to be able to hang out with our people online. Uh, and, you know, we made our own space because Facebook wasn't really... It, it's getting worse. <clears throat> Maybe you've noticed this. We're still going to be on Facebook. I don't want to give like... the impression that we're leaving. We're not. Yeah. But if you want to be part of our sort of inner place where we have our sort of best interactions, just because that's the way Facebook doesn't let you do it as much these days anymore, go to community.misfitstars.com and just request an invite. We would love to have you in there. When you join Misfit Stars, not only are you getting yourself into this community, but you are also, by becoming a monthly supporter, uh, a subscriber, you're supporting the work that Jamie and I do. So this is, it's an additional way, uh, an additional motivation. If you appreciate the stuff that we're doing and you want to encourage it and support it, and allow it to continue in the world, uh, that's what you're doing by becoming a monthly yeah. subscriber to Misfit Stars. The reason we're doing this very concert right now is because it was paid for by the Misfit Stars community. So Thank you, Misfit Stars! Thanks, Misfit Stars! Uh, we've got one more song for you, um, and I'm so pleased this one made it in to the set tonight. Um, it's from our album, Revolutionary Acts of Optimism. It's a song called Shade. You have a story to read. Um, oh, how great. Uh, it's not really a story, it's really a reflection from right. one of our stars. Uh, um, but the song Shade uh, was written about um, how uh, the experience that Jamie and I had planting trees in our yard a few years ago. Yeah. And um, I just want you to know, as a precursor to playing the song and imagery that you're about to hear with the song, that just today I noticed that there are these little buds appearing on our little trees because spring is coming. <laughs> it's so exciting. Um, so anyway, read what we have to hear from, uh, from Kitty. This is lovely. This really reads more like a meditation. Yeah. You know? Uh, we love you, Kitty. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for sharing this story. Kitty says, she starts by quoting uh, a lyric from the song, an outrageous act of faith. And then she goes on to say, I don't have the exact words. <laughs> to plant this tree so that some younger soul can come by and lie in its shade, it seems like that's the way we have to live. 
to keep believing that we'll live through the backache and someday find the shade. Yeah. Thank you, Kitty. Thanks, Kitty. And here's our last song for tonight. Yeah. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Love you guys. Love you, Shannon. I love you. Mm. Um, thank you for being here with us, people. Yeah. What a joy to share this time with you. You know, it's funny. Uh, we started doing this because it was something in our last album fundraiser back in the before times, <laughs> the, the kind of very beginning of the current times. It was like May 2020. And we were like, if we get to a hundred supporters in our fundraiser that we're doing, we're going to start doing monthly acoustic concerts. You know, we're just like, let's just see what that looks like. We didn't really think too much about it. We thought it up. We put it out there. People wanted it. They made it happen. It's just turned into this really special thing in my life. Yeah, me too. To get to spend time with older songs like this, to get to spend time with Shannon doing something sort of unusual each month, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, to get to spend time with you all in this way. I love the time that we get later tonight, tomorrow, going back and looking at the comments. There's typically like 400 comments. We just get to spend time with them. Uh, some of you say some really kind things and we love it so much. Mm -hmm. Some people share some kind of deep stuff in the comments. We love that too. Please know that if you need to share something with either of us, you can. And if it's too personal to do it in public, uh, 
you can always message us. Yeah. You can uh, send an email to Shannon at MisfitStars.com, Jamie at MisfitStars.com. If you just got to get something off your chest, we're here for you for that. That's Absolutely. okay. Uh, if you want to be part of our new social network, we would love that. Go to community.misfitstars.com to see the front page and request an invite. Or if you know you want to join up, just go to misfitstars.com slash join and get yourself signed up. We would love to have you in there. It's an amazing place. We have currently like 80 people in there. It's like this kind of self-selecting sort of first subset of our Misfit Stars support community. Every single person in there is near and dear to us. There are a bunch of people who are near and dear to me and Shannon who aren't yet in our Misfit Stars support community. So true. And we would love to have you in there. Yeah. Uh, for selfish reasons, because it's these days, a lot of how we support the work that we do and just support ourselves in the world. Really mundane things that are boring to talk about, like paying rent and <laughs> eating food, happen because we are supported by the community of people who appreciates the work that we do in the world. We are community-supported artists yeah. in that way. That is exactly how this whole thing works. It's and really so, unusual. To those of you who are already in our Misfit Stars supportive group, thank you yeah. so much. Um, and also thank you for being such excellent human beings. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to join us, please do that. Misfitstars.com slash join. And that's it for this month. Mm -hmm. We'll be back again next month. With even more obscure songs than these. <laughs> it's actually really awesome. We're kind of working our way to the very tales, the long tale of Shannon's discography. There's some great stuff in there. There are some little treasures. There's, there's some stuff. We're going to play Yellow Line one day. You know what I mean? I can't and wait to play be Yellow amazing. Line. amazing. <laughs> that song kind of like receded into the mists of time, but it kicks ass. Remember how excited we were when we did that I recording? Know, I know, oh I know, Oh my I know. gosh. So there's lots more good stuff to come. Mm. Uh, come with us. Be on the journey. Uh, Misfit Stars, we'll see you in the social network later tonight. And that's it. I'm going to get up and hit stop on one of the phones. Which one do you want to do? I'll do this one here. Okay. You get up you and hit stop on the YouTube. other one. Okay. We love you guys. Thank you. Bye. Have a great night. <laughs>